Hi everyone, our journal page today. I'm using my paper bag journal and I have this and then I just uh, cleaned a brayer here and I don't care. I'm going to cover this. I've got some uh, black here. I'm going to uh, make a background with a sponge and of course now the black dust doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, here we go. I've got black and I've got some a uh, dark uh, gray. This is slate deco art. Really doesn't matter. I'm just putting some uh, some colors that will work uh, together. I've got some uh, light gray something from the cheap store and I also got some a sage and mushroom this is art deco and I'm not sure I'm going to use them in the back I'm but I'm going to put some here just in case and we'll see what's going on so I've got a piece of sponge. I'm always a tear tearing them so I won't have straight edges and I will have more texture. I'm this is the cheapest <laughs> sponge I, uh, there is fr again from the cheap store. I'm always looking for those who has that have more texture, more uh, holes in them. So I'm just going to begin with the darker uh, gray and I'm going to just play around I want to keep the middle uh, lighter and the edges more uh, darker and it's I'm changing uh, how I hold my uh, sponge so I will get different prints each time and I'm also dipping into uh, the other colors which I haven't uh, put enough on uh, on my palette here I will rectify it in a minute I just want to start to see something more defined here just so you will see what I'm talking about. Again, changing and letting the gray and the black blend. I'm, as you can see, I'm just changing each time, so I won't get the re uh, repeat print of the same thing. And while the um, the paint is still wet, then it also blends in between. And I'm just pressing it here where uh, the fold is. Not that it's really uh, very critical, but now I've dipped into the sage and now the mushroom and I'm just playing switching to another side and letting everything just mix together so I won't see a blob of one a uh, color so I'm going to put a lot more paint here and I'm going to continue doing the same thing over and over again and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my start of the background and I kept adding uh, until I was satisfied with what's going on and at first it was uh, darker, too much uh, dark in the middle, so I added a little bit of a cream color and again just blended it with the, all this uh, 
all the colors I had uh, here. So now I want to stencil. I've got this stencil that I've cut from, this is acetate, and I just drew these bricks and cut them. Um, and I want to uh, use this here. Now I want, I'm going to try and use the same sponge in hopes that the bricks won't be a solid color and we'll see what happens if it doesn't work so well then I will just uh, switch to makeup sponge and I've got again I've got a little bit of uh, the dark gray a uh, light gray and I still have the cream here we'll see I'll just start with something and we'll see where it's going so just oops too much paint if you've got too much paint on your sponge no matter what sponge it is then you're going to, uh, to get spillage underneath your stencil which I'm thinking that's what's going to be here when I'm going to lift it let's see I'm dabbing so I won't have excess uh, paint good enough I just need an impression of bricks I didn't need anything more than that I just want a little bit here so let's place it another brick and another here just so it will uh, continue um, to this page and it won't look like I'm working on one like this and I'm going to do the same thing uh, here so I'm just going to flip the journal it will be easier for me and let's see let's do something like that really doesn't matter as I said, more impression of bricks than anything else. If you want texture, then you, of course you can take modeling paste and do the bricks so you will have an actual texture of bricks on your page. so I don't know if you noticed but I've also went when I stenciled from dark gray to lighter gray and then the cream again just so it won't be all flat and the same color just want a small break here good enough and yeah I'm going to let this a uh, dry before I continue I'll be back I'm back so got this I want to stencil now I've got this stencil I just is something I bought on Aliexpress no brand no name <laughs> and I want to go something like that now I've got three colors here again 
just so I will have variation while I'm stenciling. I've got some dark blue, light blue, and some, I don't know what to call it, light turquoise or <laughs> a mint, whatever. It just, you can pick any colors you want. I just like to have uh, three shades to play with. And again, so I won't have solid color. I'm using a makeup sponge. And once again, I'm taking a little bit and dabbing. So I won't have uh, too much excess. And I thought about, and I'm still thinking about it that maybe I should have stenciled uh, first with gesso so I will have a solid uh, primer solid ground for the stenciling but I didn't do it and I'm just uh, moving on with this uh, if it won't be enough I will just go over it and add a second layer but it's not that important just going over if i think it's not enough and now moving on to the next uh, shade and continuing not cleaning my sponge not replacing it so then it seems a uh, seamless the uh, the move from b between the two colors and I can also take a little bit of the uh, darker color and a little bit of the lighter color and continue so as I said it seems seamless So a little bit more of this color and I will add from this one just going over where I think it needs a little bit more okay switching to this color and let it letting this blend picking from both of the colors so the lighter color uh, I, I will lift in uh, the stencil in a little bit is not that pronounced on uh, this darker area but either I will use um, some permanent marker to go over the contours of it or I'll just leave it be we'll see or I'll go again and again more layers until it will be more uh, noticeable so I'm going to add more branches to this with the same stencil. I think I'll go, I want one that goes like this and more like this. So I'm going to play with the same stencil and with the colors and add more branches. So I'm uh, going to come uh, back when it's finished. and i'm back kept stenciling more and more branches all over the place <laughs> had so much fun same stencil just uh, used a different part each time so now i want to just add my word to this page and it's believe i'm going to put it here and this time i want it to pop and i'm going to first a uh, do some a stenciling with white gesso and I need a clean a sponge let's see I hope that it, I'm straight here with the word 
yeah let's hope so and i'm taking again from the gesso white gesso dabbing it so i won't have spillage and very lightly tapping now it doesn't look white because i have a darker a surface underneath but it's better to start this way and then go and do another layer instead of dealing with uh, excess paint or gesso in this case So I'm going back here and just adding another layer. I don't need it to be stark white, I just need to have a nice base. So I will go in with a, this mint color on top of it. Okay, switching. I can uh, always, when I'm finished, take some a uh, permanent pen and go around the letters to make them pop more. We'll see in a minute when I lift the stencil and we'll see if it needs anything else i'm already thinking <laughs> of my next uh, of the next page because i like this so much i'm thinking of doing something similar only this time uh, the branches will be with purple and magenta i think this something like this a uh, very um a monochromatic a background uh, will be very nice uh, with brand, with purple and magenta. Uh, yay! Yeah, I am leaving it be. I'm not adding anything to the letters. I like it. I even like where uh, I have a little bit of white popping uh, on the sides of the letters and leaving it be i really like it so this is it for now thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now